Hey out there guys, it's Root Dog here. It is Sunday, no, it's actually Saturday. September 6th, I think, yeah. You see the Bronco back there? Uh, haven't made any videos lately, haven't been posting much, only because, uh, gee, just haven't had any money to do anything. You know, things have been slow. I mean, since I went out to Death Valley, you know, I had time. I was off work then, came back after that, and I've been working like part-time, and now I'm off again, so just really haven't had any money to go anywhere or do anything. So that's what's up with that. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Um, I had a, somebody asked me about rebuilding the, uh, someone commented to me, yeah, about rebuilding the do-it-yourself rebuild on the uh, e40d transmission on the bronco back there you know so i said yeah i did it i did mine it was quite complicated uh i got some experience on it now but i'm no expert um if you watch my past videos you see i got it together but it didn't work exactly quite right i ended up taking it to a shop and it's never been the same it does run it does run but I don't trust it something's still not quite right with it and I just haven't had the money to get it taken care of so that's why it's parked back there because uh, shoot if I was working full-time I'd, I'd have it fixed by now but what can I say so that's what's up with that um, I'm going to um, upload a video I found um, on YouTube that I found quite helpful when I redid my rebuild Okay, only problem was it's in Russian But they did a real good job. So what I did is I dubbed over English commentary, and that's my voice you hear talking on there and uh, So I'm gonna show you that and it's it's pretty it's pretty good. They did a pretty good job um, Just for your information I used a kit from TCI, a TCI Master Rebuild Kit. I don't remember how much it was, but you can look them up on Summit Racing. I think that's where I got it. It's a TCI E4D Master Rebuild Kit. And then I had to buy a book. Yeah, so then I went and I got this book right here. Yes, yeah, so I went out and I got this book right here. A TSG automatic transmission service group updates changes included it also comes with a disc and in the disc I believe it shows you uh, in the disc in the disc I think it shows the upgrades that have been done to this transmission through the years I assume uh, yeah so let me get to this video I'm gonna upload it right now like I said, it's Saturday. Gosh, I'm going nuts sitting around doing nothing. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I mean, I haven't afraid, kind of, I'm kind of afraid to spend money because it's. don't know where my next paycheck's coming from. Meanwhile, the bank account keeps going lower and lower. So, uh, that's what it is. I've been going to the beach, is what I mean. I go to the beach. I go up to the local mountains, went camping up there a few weeks ago, did some hiking, but, you know, fuel, I need fuel money. So, as you can see, they've got the transmission standing on end, that's a good way to do it. I wish I would have thought of that when I did my transmission. It would have made things much simpler. There's the pump. It's got a bunch of bolts on it. There's the pan. you got to take the pan off. The oil pan. There, underneath the oil pan. you got the main valve body. And that's also... Uh, and then you got the filter, take the filter off. There you go, there's the valve body. It's got the accumulator, the main body, and solenoid pack. 
accumulator, main control body, and your solenoid pack and the orange over there. A lot of little parts in this transmission. That solenoid pack is electronically controlled by the engine computer, the PCM, power control module. This is the pump. This is what pumps the transmission fluid throughout the uh, transmission and input shaft. Yeah, your input shaft. So they're removing the pump here, and there's a special tool for this. In those holes, there's two holes that are threaded, and there's a special tool you throw, put in there, and you use a puller to pull it out. And in this video, they pry it out. And that's one thing my book says not to do is pry anything on these transmissions. Yeah. So if you, I made my own pulling tool, a couple of bolts, a piece of chain, and I was able to pull the pump out. It's in there tight. It's got a, seals on it. There you go. The pump assembly. As you can see, it's quite complicated too. This comes all apart too. There's valves in there. Uh, you got thrust washers. There's little springs. Uh, you can take that apart. But right now they're just pulling it out of the transmission. Yeah, thrust washers, yeah. Don't forget where all this stuff goes, like I did. That's the input shaft. There's your input shaft. There's two different ends on that input shaft. One has long thre uh, threads, we call those. Yeah, splines, yeah. One has short splines. And then under that, you got the coast clutch. Oh, well, take the gasket out. Yeah, it's got a gasket. And then, coast clutch assembly. That comes apart too. And there's all kinds of clutches in there. Clutches and steels and little bearings and uh, snap rings. And, uh, well, that's a whole other video. Underneath that, the overdrive ring gear and center shaft assembly, that comes apart too. It's got seals. Yeah, yeah. There's a thrust washer there. It's got some planetary gears inside. Now at this point, that's a sp spring-loaded uh, clutch pack in there, I forget what it's called, but it takes a special tool to take that out. But first they're going to take out the overdrive pressure plate and clutch pack. This is another clutch pack. It's got a snap ring in there, and that snap ring's got to go in a certain way too. You can put it in differently, but they recommend that it goes in a certain way. Just like everything in this goes in a certain way. There's your clutch pack. It's got a clutch, a steel, a clutch, a steel, a clutch, a steel, and a thick one is a pressure plate. And it's all got to go in a certain order. Yeah. Mm hmm. So that comes out fairly simple. Now that is a, uh, what was that called? That assembly there is spring loaded, so you need a compressor tool to compress the spring, and then there's another snap ring you can take out. But you can't take the snap ring out yet, or you can't disassemble that assembly until you take the valve body apart. Yeah. So now they're going to take the valve body apart. My book says to do the valve body first. But then again, like I said, these guys are just backyard mechanics. Well, not backyard mechanics. They're garage mechanics. They're not transmission specialists. They're learning on this. They're pretty good, though. 
They, they did a better job than I did. There's a lot of little screws on there. And you can't over torque them. They'll pull right out of that aluminum body there and you're screwed. I had to um, put some uh, heli coil, a couple of them, because they, they stripped out. Freaking nightmare. So there you go. There's your accumulator body. That is a little filter there for the solenoid pack. It's just a little screen filter. Yeah, it's supposed to come out with a little twist and it just lifts out. I think these are like eight or ten millimeter screws. I cannot over tighten them. So if you think it looks like a circuit board, well it's basically what it is, except instead of electricity, it's hydraulic fluid running through all those little passages and there's little springs in there and check balls and well a lot of dirt in that transmission let's see so as you can see here he's pointing out the check balls those are little check balls in there there's a certain number of check balls and it all depends on what model transmission you have what e40d you've got uh, they changed design in, in some of the years, so you got to look at the book and identify exactly what valve body you have, because you want to put it back in right. There's a rubber balls and then there's some metal balls in there too. You got to remember where all those go. If you got the book, the book will show you, but then you got to remember you've got the right transmission. You got to identify it. So you put them back in the right spot and count them. Now the check ball just plugs those holes up when there's pressure behind or in front of the ball. The check ball will push against the hole and block the hole off until the pressure goes the other way. But uh, I assume if you leave one of those out, you're going to be you're going to have some kind of problem. I don't recommend drinking beer while you're doing this, or anything else. You might confuse yourself. So here he's looking around for the check ball. So where's the check ball at? A check ball there and a check ball there. Got that one out of there. Okay. All right. All right. So now he's going to run a magnet in there, see if there's any mag uh, any metal check balls in there. Or anything else floating around. This is a good idea. I didn't do that. Okay, so that's all clear. Shoot. Let's see, now he's going to take the solenoid pack off. Now that solenoid pack, I think, is one, two, three, four. There's actually four solenoids on there. And that controls your shifts, first, second, third. It's just an electronic valve. That's all it is. Well, four electronic valves, I think. Might be more. And there you have it. That's the connector where he's pouring in at right there. Not that. That. And that's got an O-ring on it because it's got a seal. Remember that. Shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh boy.
That's to cover the electrical connection so nothing shorts out or anything. So now, see that hole right there? Yeah. So now he's got the main body to take apart. You see the shaft down on the bottom there? That's your uh, shifter. Your, uh, yeah. You shift it in drive and reverse, that's, that's the thing that moves there. It's okay, he pulls that off. Make sure nothing falls out. And then you got the separator plate. Separator plate, yeah. And there is a spring loaded little check ball underneath that separator plate. Make sure that don't pop out and roll away on you. And there's also more check balls in there, and so he's looking at those right now. Once he gets the separator plate out, there's the filter. There's the check ball. Check ball, check ball. So like I said, there's there's different um there's different check balls depending on what what variation or what model of E40D you have. There's a different count and there's different locations for them. Depending on what version, I guess you would call it. See, like I said, you really have to identify what you have there before you take the check balls out. Boy, it sure's got to see. Now there's a little that's that's there's a little spring loaded check valve right there. That's the one you gotta make sure it doesn't pop out and roll away on you. It's an EPC ball and blow off spring. What does it do? I have no idea. That's that's got to go back in that hole. So now he's, uh, dogs. Now he's counting the check balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Mm hmm. So now he's going to remove the check balls. And like I said, there's metal check balls and there's rubber check balls. And that's the end of part one. Yeah.